Another question that pops up uh, is around how do you lead generate? How do you get clients? Um, and it might just vary. Um, as I said, uh, Linda, she and leverages off um, her existing uh, client base and it becomes a nice bolt-on uh, to what she's already selling. Others like Glenda, I mentioned, she'd picked a niche in the dental space and she's actively marketing into that group and attending conferences and posting content and connecting on LinkedIn with her ideal target audience. And then because she connects with the right people and she's posting content regularly, and then the, the systemology message she takes and then tailors it to her dental niece, niche, there's no one else doing that. So it sticks out like a sore thumb in the feed and starts to really engage people. And then she wins work that way. Um, Rob, I, I, you always hit the ground uh, running really like straight out of the gate, bull out of the gate. You, um, within the six months, you, you were just running a, a full book. How, how were you doing your lead generation? Well, it started with, I'm, I'm part of a business networking group. So we meet every three months. So we do a full mastermind and this is around Australia. So every three months I jump on a plane, go to where the group is. There's no more than a hundred businesses in this group. So the business coach, the owner of the company and I are very close friends. In fact, he's my business partner. So when he's coaching his clients, one of the biggest frustrations is it's all in my head. Everything, everyone's coming up to me, asking all the questions. How do I resolve that? He says, contact Rob. We book in for a 20 minute mentor call. We have a conversation around how I can help them with their systems. And it evolves and we sign them up and they can sign up to a concierge or a membership, depending on where they're at within the business. And then I meet with them either once a week or once a, once a fortnight. So it's, it starts with that and it builds a relationship through that JV referral. So Sean doesn't necessarily need a financial reward for being my JV because he knows that the end result is they've got, he has a client that now their systems are being taken care of. They're a better client for him and he could be a better coach for them. So it works sideways with the way that I'm part of this group as a mentor, as a supporting factor to that group. But every three months I get to meet with them and just support them. And I walk away with three or four new business clients I'm working with. And it's really th three or four new friends that I've just made every time I go away for that quarter and have that in business mastermind. So that was that part I did for the first two years. In fact, Dave and I, I presented on stage in Darwin and Darwin went in lockdown the day that I arrived, the day that Dave flew in and I was on my way to the airport to pick him up, rang me, Rob, I'm turning around, Darwin's in lockdown, I'm flying back to Melbourne. And I've gone, oh, okay, cool. So I'm, I'm presenting by myself and I visualized in my head that you and I are going to be on stage for a couple of hours presenting systemology. And I'm now on stage on my own with you jumping in via Zoom, which was fantastic. But the end result of that, I think 15 businesses from that 100 business group signed up the following week. And some a couple of months later when they just settled into the right space, but they rewatched the video, they rewatched that presentation, they were now ready to do that. So the JV is the most important. The other aspect of using LinkedIn and B2B and trying to get a, a, some sort of link from LinkedIn back into our CRM. So I'm now doing monthly webinars on LinkedIn and it just becomes, you know, you might have 90 people that register for the webinar and only 15 people show up. The key isn't how many people show up. The key is the recording that you offer them afterwards because a lot of them are time poor and they can jump in a webinar in the middle of like one o'clock on a Wednesday, a handful will. But the ones that get that I've seen the most response from are the ones that said, thank you for sending me the recording of your webinar. That was amazing. So in fact, Amy and I were talking about this this morning is that my biggest fear of doing webinars and what if no one shows up? Well, the key factor is have three or four people that are guaranteed to show up to ask Q&A. They might be friends or family, whoever that looks like. The power is in the power of recording what you've done, create an amazing presentation and repurpose that recording over and over and over again. Get yourself out there. Just be seen. Get out of your comfort zone and just go, just do it. I know you're nervous. It's racking, but once you do it and that endorphins you feel about success of completing something like that, the end result is I've already had more than 10 people from LinkedIn jump in and just want to just meet and have more of a deeper discussion on what they watched in that recording, not the live presentation, the recording. So that's just some of the ways we're just going, how do we get out there and just be seen, just be noticed? Um, one thing that happened for me, it just bubbled up on something that you'd said just then. When I got towards the tail end of the digital agency business and I kind of fell out of love with it. And part of the reason I fell out of love with it is, you know, I want to over deliver for my clients and they were coming to me for SEO and some of them wanted to, you know, be ranking for certain keywords and things like that. And I needed to make promises on things that I didn't have control over. So how can I make a promise on something when it really comes down to Google? We can do all the best things in the world and ultimately it's up to Google. So towards the end, I kind of felt, I didn't feel great about selling SEO services because for some clients, we'd smash it out of the park. And then for other clients, it wouldn't work as well for them. Maybe they're in a more competitive niche. Maybe something had happened to their domain name. Like there are all these reasons. And then that started to kind of eat away at me. And then, you know, I, I didn't want to go back into the space. And that was also part of the time then we decided to sell when, when Melissa moved on from that position. Um, and I wanted to make sure for the next business that we did, which has evolved into systemology, that I could feel really good about selling 
because that means I can sell hard because I know I can deliver on the promises that we make. We can get a phenomenal result for the business owner. They love it. We love it. It's not dependent on anyone else. Like I don't have to worry about what Google's going to do. I just know what I have to do to get the result for the client. And I think that's partly why systemology is growing so much stronger because I can feel confident to get out there and do the presentations that Rob's talking about, be consistent about it, share it. And, you know, I feel like I'm doing business owners a disservice if they don't get systemology working in their business. Because I know they're going to spend their money somewhere. They're going to go off and buy some Black Friday special for some, you know, internet marketing LinkedIn course, and they'll spend a few grand and work with a consultant. And, you know, they may or may not get the result. Uh, they're either going to spend their money on that, or they're going to spend their money with systemology, and they're going to have permanent life altering change happen in their business. I do them a disservice if I let the if I don't sell and present systemology well enough that they go spend that money elsewhere and get taken advantage of. Because I know systemology delivers a result. If, if they commit to it and they lean in and they create a systems-driven company and they build that culture inside their organization, and it's a rite of passage, you can't scale a business without great systems. And it, it's it's this problem has been as old as the dawn of time. Like business owners struggle to make that step between I'm a small solo operator or a small team and a, who micromanages and is across everything to moving into growing and scaling and learning the skills to systemize and step back and find the right team to run the operations. So, uh, and we solve the, the problem better than anyone else. <laughs>